Hey everybody, we are here with a fully functional streaming computer. Yes, I personally replaced the power supply in this computer, which I legitimately did not think I was going to be able to do um, in time for a stream tonight. Once again, Carol, Carol bet against me on this and she turned out to be right uh, because she was actually betting for me whilst betting against me she was she was betting against my my under um appreciation i guess of my own skills um but i do really really truly want to thank everybody out there who um helped me diagnose the problem with the streaming computer um hi shaquille why is your there you go oh we need nicknames do we um i am slightly frightened about your nickname, Shaquille, but you are welcome to propose to the group. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord. So anyway, uh, yeah, so functional computer and new power supply, replaced it myself, had, um, again, thank you so much from everybody for everyone who helped me diagnose the actual problem. And um, thank you to, um, hi Corvus, thank you to Lucky Lee, Twitch, who's probably not on, who I called in for a last minute, like, I had literally hooked everything up perfectly and everything was fine, and I just literally had not. <gasps> Hi, Keiko! I mean, I think Shaquille wants something a little more colorful, I'm just guessing. Um, also, this, God, this necklace project is... I didn't actually, I didn't actually wind up doing this one on stream because this was the night that I had the terrible panic attack and couldn't, couldn't function in any capacity streaming or not. Um, but I do, yeah, I have issues with this. I should have, okay, what, what I should have, what should have happened was with this project, which I will do at some point on a, on a free form. But, um, I should, okay, there's still a lag, but, um, and, oh, come on, I fixed the exposure, it shouldn't be that light. God, why is so much, why is so much lag, oh my goodness. Um, but anyway, what I should have done on this is I should have moved these closer to the, a little bit towards the top of the stones because what what really happens every time I wear this necklace which is a bummer because I really like this necklace and I'm planning on adding to it is that these these pieces all um, they flip forward as you as you could see me um, messing with them earlier so let's see if we can fix this exposure and then we'll talk about what we're doing this evening Hi, Jasmine on YouTube. Yay! Yay for people across multiple platforms. Sh uh, Shaquille, you don't know my name? Oh, Silvern. Yeah. Welcome to another platform. I should have known that. I'm sorry. Good Lord. And I'm, I'm about to like, get aggro with, sh with uh, Shaquille because he doesn't know my name. Um... Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but actually, um, Silver, and, uh, do me a favor, tell me how the, uh, YouTube experience is, because that is our least viewed platform, um, which I stream to mostly because it's, like, an auto-archive, but, um, I would like to, Susie, my name is not Susie Shaquille. Really? Heather is correct, but not for me. Keiko actually totally just, just you know, gave you crib notes, but it was on the, the wrong platform. Um, but now I'm just going to give Shaquille crap until he guesses my name. Um... Okay, we're going to go with that. I know it's a little bright. It might be a little bright when I turn on the torch, but anyway. Melinda? Really? That's what you... Melinda. I mean, there's an L in it. I, keep guessing, Shaquille. Nope. 
Not not Linda either. Not Lin We have a Linda. We have a Linda who's a delightful client. Uh, but she's also not me. So no, I am neither Linda nor am I Melinda. Uh, I am currently unfocused. So let's fix that. And then we're going to start talking about this evening's project. So this evening's class actually, and holy mother of God, I've got to do classes for next week. And I haven't even done that yet. So um, that's going to be exciting. Um, oh, really, Lori? I actually did not know that. <laughs> so, all right. So we've got the chat. Throwing you a bone, Shaquille, uh, telling you that my name starts with A, and that it is Lori's middle name, but it is not Amy. Um, it is also similar to Lori's username. That is correct. So, today's project is this, and this actually came about because uh, my mother's birthday is coming up. She is a she is a Pisces. Okay, Shaquille, you you got you got a nickname, so you get yeah you're getting warmer, um, and you did get the spelling right, uh. But anyway, so yeah, my mother's uh, birthday is coming up, and I want to make her a bracelet. <laughs> yes, Shaquille, you guessed it. My name is Alfonso. Yes, under. 100% that that that's it you got it um, but no so I um so I have an idea for a bracelet to make my mother for her birthday that involves some kind of chunky charms and I'm looking I'm sitting here looking in catalogs and, and on Etsy for a chunky silver sterling silver chain for her birthday and all of a sudden I'm like you dummy you can make chunky sterling silver chain Sorry, Keiko wins stream. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, <laughs> it's like, you know, why, why are you doing this? Why are you looking? You can make sterling silver chain and you can make it, you know, if I don't, you, you broke me a little bit, Keiko. Just a little, just a tiny bit. That was amazing. I think that should be on the button list. And the only reason that Mary hasn't, um, clipped it is because she's on a boat right now. So, Shaquille, my name is Allison, A-L-L-Y-S-O-N, um, because my father had to be original with the spelling. So, yes, you did finally, um, <laughs> no, Lori, we're not going to do that because that would result, I mean, well, actually... Maybe if I wanted her not to talk to me for a week, which would be really restful. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no penises on her birthday chain, but um, people call me Allison. But A L L Y, dude, not, I mean, I'll, I, I will also answer to Alfonso. I am not picky, except about the spelling. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so the, the upshot is I'm looking at all these chains on Etsy and at, from my vendors and I'm like, what am I doing? I can do this and moreover, I can show you all how to do this. So we are going to make a chain bracelet tonight with just a basic round link chain. So literally we are going to start with 16 gauge sterling silver wire, and we're gonna wind up with a chain bracelet. So the cool thing about realizing that if you know how to solder a basic circle, you can make a chain is that you don't have to make it round. You can make it oval, you can make it textured, you can make it from pattern wire. Like There are so many possibilities. You can texture only half the lengths. You can do textured, and non-textured, like really, one of, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get a little philosophical here and then I'm gonna need to go grab a class, but one of the most valuable things I feel like, you could total, totally make it cat heads, Keiko, you just, you'd have to bend them. But yes, if you make yourself a template and you bend little wire cat heads, 
solder them closed, then you can solder them together. Or um, I feel like cat, like a cat head, all cat head chain would be awkward because you'd have cat heads that are flat and then ones that are sticking out. But what you could totally do that would I think be better is cat heads and then link them with just plain round links. So, so here's one of the most valuable things I think about learning to do very simple things like making chain is once you internalize that kind of knowledge, it makes it much easier to then go out into the world and deconstruct and reverse engineer things and say, hey, I like that. Hey, using these basic skills, I have a fairly good idea of how that's done. So now I can bring that knowledge back into my studio and I can work on constructing my own version of this thing that's out there in the universe that is either better, cheaper, you know, more suited to my needs or even just, you know, I made it rather than buying it. So like the back when I was a dancer, not a stripper, Shaquille, don't even go there. Um, I, I never understood the dancers who were like, oh, I want to take a basic class. Like we're not basic, we're professional. It's like, there's always, there's always something to learn from going back to the roots of whatever technique you are doing, whether it's jewelry, dance, like acting, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like there's always value. And I feel like there's, I'm sorry, I'll stop philosophizing, I promise, in like 30 seconds. But like, I also feel like there's value, a lot of value in going back to the roots after you have the advanced knowledge because you can have then a better understanding of the roots to which you are returning and how to take that knowledge and um, apply it to your more advanced performance skills. And um, the answer is yes, Shaquille, I can perform ballet or jazz or modern dance for you. However, I can't do it in the streaming area because it is literally 24 inches by 36 inches. So, um, I will, are, Shaquille, are you on our Discord? No, I keep trying to get him to join. Shaquille, if you join our Discord, I will drop one and only one photo later this evening because I'm going to have to go like take photos of photos. Um, Shaquille, type exclamation point Discord into the Twitch chat and then click on that link. Thank you, Lori. Um, Shaquille, if you join our Discord, I will drop one and only one photo of me in my actual performing dancing days just for you. But you have to join our Discord. If I don't get a notice that you've joined our Discord, then you're going to miss out on it. So anyway, let's talk about the basics of making chain, okay? Um, and I, I know I'm missing tools because I, I legit was not expecting to stream tonight. Like the, the whole, like I have a working computer and I fixed it is still, a, it's still weird to me. But um, so the basics of making chain are you need metal. I'm going to be using 16 gauge sterling silver wire. Um, Keiko, yeah, okay, so as as far as, okay, so Keiko was asking about, can you make a chain that looks like little kitty heads? And the answer, of course, is yes. So I said make a template. Um, all right, well, I'm not going to drop the photo till after I get home because I got to go literally, like, find a photo of me in my dancing years and then photograph it and then put it in there. So you're going to have to have a little bit of patience. Shaquille, but I promise that I will I will drop a photo in the Discord of me in my in my dancing years just to prove that it you did actually happen. Pot, Ooh, Heather will put one in too, and I promise. I mean, I actually do have some that involve poles, but they're they're mostly horizontal, not vertical poles. Um, but anyway, so 
Keiko was asking about, can you make a chain that's shaped like cat heads? And so I suggested make a template. So then her question regarding that was, would, would you just draw it out on a piece of paper and then bend the wire using the template as a guide? Um, and the answer to that is yes, if that's what works for you. Personally, I, I'm crap at following templates. So what, what I do, and this is a little extra, because you all may have noticed that, that sometimes I'm extra. Well, what would happen if you called our shop right now? Shaquille is nothing because I'm on stream. There's no one to answer the phone. Um, but anyway. So, so yes, you could absolutely just draw your little kitty head out on a piece of paper. Use that as a template. Like, put your wire against it, bend it, whatever. What works better for me, because once again, little extra, is actually to, to draw it out and then measure. Yeah, that's Heather Human. She's doing other stuff. She ain't answering the phones either. We're closed. There There is no phone answering until 1 p.m. tomorrow. Um, so what works better for me, and this may or may not work for you, Keiko, is, is to take and draw that template, but then like measure out, like if, okay, if we're gonna be like, okay, well the, here's half the ear, then the other ear, and then this is the forehead, and then this, that, the third, and make little points. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of freehand bend using those measurements so that everything looks fairly uniform, uh, but I'm not like actually putting it on a piece of paper. That's just me. Um, <laughs> uh, Shaquille, uh, gluten-free pepperoni and extra large six cheese for the Heather human. Just saying. An extra garlic sauce if you're ordering from a place that has such a thing. You can find our address on the internet. Just Google Beating Dreams. Um, so, so that's my um, that's my answer, Keiko, ab about that question. So I'm not going to do anything quite that complicated tonight, though that may be a future tutorial, is shaped chain. I'm just going to do round chain. Okay, so here's the thing when you're making chain, when you're soldering it, is that the way it is almost always done is you want to solder as much of it flat as you can because soldering links that are perpendicular oh campesius has yummy gluten-free pizza oh, it's yeah, true they, they really do um i mean that that is and that gluten and gluteny ones yeah that's like fancy like if shaquille wants to get us fancy pizza campesius is definitely the way to go typically we're more of a papa john's store because we we broke up in here so anyway so so when you're making chain think think about how it's gonna go together and you you can take literally 50% of your chain links and you can just solder those babies flat and then you use the other 50% to link them together and then those you have to solder in a li little bit more of a three-dimensional fashion but don't make your life harder than it has to be. Do as much work flat as you possibly can. If you're going to do any texturing, like if you're doing a chain that half the links are textured and half the links are not, solder half the links and then texture them and then use the other ones to link them together. Like try your best to not make extra work for yourself. And I realize as I'm saying that, that that's a little bit ironic coming from me, but I promise like there, I, 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 I have, sometimes I can do that. So here's the other secret of making round things and round-ish things is almost every, if you're talking about a manufactured product, like a chain, almost every circle, oval, or other shape starts as a coil. So, um, if, and, and if you're doing something like a cat head, like this is different, but if you're doing something 
that's an oval, that's a round, that's a square, a triangle. Like if this is manufactured, what will typically happen with this is you'll make your coil, you will cut them, you will solder them, and then they will be molded on a mandrel to make the shape. So we're gonna take the simplest of those shapes, we're gonna do circles, okay? So we're just gonna start with the straight up coil. Okay, apparently I am Alf Alfonso now and forever. <laughs> so, you know, tell Tangerine Dream and... That was... I know, that was extremely obscure. <laughs> I'm amazed you even got that. Because, <laughs> wow. We share a brain. We, we do share a brain, but wa that was... Yeah, it was... You aren't wrong. Yeah. So anyway... So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a coil. And I may not actually manage to make a full bracelet length during the tutorial tonight since I have talked quite a lot, but we're, we're going to do a decent enough length that you guys can see how this all works. So I'm going to start with my bail making pliers. Um, so of course it's a soldering tutorial so you're going to need all the soldering stuff, but um, if you're going to be making a lot of chains and things like that, your bail making pliers are a pretty invaluable tool. Um, can you do the same thing by wrapping your wire around a dowel, around a mandrel, around a random object that's hanging out in your workspace? Of course you can, but your bail making pliers are going to be quicker and more efficient. So if you do this a lot, this is a tool that's worth investing in. That being said, it's not a cheap tool. Um, these babies retail depending on the quality for anywhere between $30 and $60 a piece, maybe even more because everything's gotten more expensive lately. So once again, if you do a lot of chain, you make a lot of jump rings, things like that, this is a tool that's worth it. If you don't do that, then put your money somewhere else. Buy pretty beads instead from the beading dreams. Uh, so to make a coil on my bail making pliers, I am going to use my biggest um, section of my bail making pliers because I'm trying to make the most amount of chain possible in the least amount of time um, that I have. So I'm going to use the biggest part of my bail making pliers to make some nice big chunky round links. I'm just going to grab my wire in those bail making pliers nice and firmly. And I'm going to just rotate that wire around like so. So see how it's curving around those pliers? And I'm just going to loosen my pliers, rotate them back, rotate again. This problem is happening because I'm trying to look at the camera and not look at the thing. Okay, so the way that this works is there. So you're just going to rotate. Rotate, 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 rotate. So see how this is making a coil? Also notice that this coil is slightly bigger than my pliers. Okay, this the rule still applies um, that we're used to with wire, which is that it's going to spring up a little bigger than whatever you bend it around. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep so I have okay hold on let's let's move the camera like I have this this spike mark but then of course everything got all like cattywampus today while I was taking down the entire streaming setup so there we go all right so I'm just gonna keep rotating this around and making my coils so, like I said, we're probably not going to make a whole chain bracelet tonight, but we're going to make a good start at one. Alright, so we're going to call that enough coils for now. So what do I have? It, it, and bear in mind that you are going to lose some from cutting. So I've got two, four, six, I've got about nine coils. So that's enough for my demonstration this evening. Um, as far as how many coils do you need to make a bracelet, um, basically you would measure the uh, the diameter of each circle and then you would subtract a little bit due to the fact that when they interlock, 
um, you're going to lose a bit because of the diameter of the wire. And then we're actually going to saw them tonight, so we're not going to lose as much by cutting as we normally would. Um, but it's never a bad idea to make more than you think you're going to need. Alright, so I'm just going to take that and I'm going to snip it. Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to saw these coils apart. So, what I need to help me with that is... Oh, Lord, have mercy. I just don't want to come out. Alright. Painter's tape. And try not to knock everything down. So I'm going to take my coil. Right here. And I'm going to grab some painter's tape and I'm going to wrap my painter's tape a couple times around my coil. So this is the best way if you're going to saw to keep everything together because otherwise what's going to happen is the action of the saw is going to pull these coils apart and that's not what you want because it's going to distort the shape and the size. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap these liberally in painter's tape. like a couple times around is actually ideal so got a few times around with the painter's tape you want it to be nice and tight so that's the other place where a couple times around is going to help because see how my first wrap was not so tight so my my next wrap and the one after that are fixing that okay so this is my coil wrapped in my painter's tape now this is a bench pin, all right? So if you saw this is your best friend, if you saw and you're not very good at it, you might hate it with a fiery passion. But the fact is it's a it is one of your most useful tools when you're sawing. So it is There we go. Okay, so there it is. And so, since I don't have a permanent jeweler's bench, um, I've got a clamp-on bench pin that just clamps onto the edge of my table. So there we go. So your bench pin has a notch, and um, this is always super exciting because when I add my bench pin to my streaming space, literally there's like barely enough room for it and me in the streaming space. Um, I've got my jeweler's uh, saw. With a, with a two aught saw blade on it and what I've done is I've loaded my saw blade into the bottom of my saw but not the top so I'm going to go ahead and take my little tube um, that's covered in painter's tape I'm going to drop that over the saw blade and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lean into um, my saw against the table I'm going to drop the blade into the top loading receptacle and then I'm going to twist this nut shut. And what that should do is it should give me a nice tight um, load on my saw blade. But of course it didn't because I was trying to do it on camera and I didn't do a very good job of it. So, sorry. Let me fix it. There we go. Much better. Okay, so you want a good tight load on your saw blade. Once again, Shaquille, just don't even. No, I forbid it. But your saw blade is going to work best if there's tension on it. So now what I'm going to do is locate my chair a little bit this way. Come back. Someday I'll have a streaming area that's bigger than a postage stamp, but today is not that day. So I'm going to just line that up and I'm going to brace it in the V spot of my pin. And I'm just going to saw until I saw through all of my rings. And yes, you just witnessed the fact that my bench pin does not really love this table. So I can't pull on it the way that I would like to. Again, someday I shall have the perfect streaming area where my bench pin doesn't come off like that. Ooh, 
<laughs> I mean, Lori, it's true. He might he might have a some kind of aneurysm if you told him that you had a bun in the oven at this point. Um, unless it was, I mean, you could tell one of the cats had a bun in the oven, maybe. I don't know. I, I think you're wise in not uh, saying things that might cause your husband to have an unexpected aneurysm. Okay. So, take 75, we're going to go ahead and we're going to saw these. And do you beware of your fingers, and am I practicing the best and most um, safe finger position? Well, now I am. I wasn't before. So now we're going to go ahead and saw these. So, sawing rings is one of those things that is an utter pain in the ass. Like, it really, really is. Uh, and the only reason to do it is if you're trying to saw a lot of rings and you really hate files. Because what sawing your rings does is it makes a flush cut, like way flusher than any wire cutter can do, but as you can see, it's a complete pain in the butt. And it is 100% not my favorite. I would rather cut with a wire cutter and file, also because you get this nonsense of like, look, my, my top ring has caught on my saw and now it's just completely messing up everything. So that's lovely. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can at least get a few good rings out of this coil. Oh, I got it. So I, I actually got a four pack of gluten free buns the other day, which has gone up to $6.99 here in the US. And I so much enjoyed all of my carby awesomeness with the buns. <coughs> I was very sad when my my four buns for $7 were, were gone. Okay, so I did manage to successfully saw some things. So that's exciting. And um, uh, what you can do if you've mostly sawed through them, but not all the way, is a lot of times if you'll just flex them, uh, they'll break. In in the good way, in the way that they will, they'll break along this seam. So these are my ones that sawed well, so yay for that. This is the one at the top. That's not ideal, so I probably won't be using that one. And then um, this one has a little bit of, of overlap still there, so I'm going to see if I can snap that off as well. So the, the cool thing about sawing your rings instead of cutting them with the wire cutter is that you don't have to file them. So if you're good with a saw or if you're just okay with the sometimes traumatic and difficult relationship that a lot of us jewelers have with the saw, um, then you can skip the occasionally traumatic and difficult relationship that a lot of us jewelers have with a file. So really, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, you just have to kind of pick your battles here and pick which battle is least odious. To you, I personally will, would rather file jump rings than saw them, but um, I uh, am not going to judge anybody who chooses the opposite path. Hi, Simi! How are you? Okay, so now we're going to work on soldering our very abbreviated chain, okay? And I am going to just take a real quick bounce over, grab a clasp. I'll be right back. Okay, 
So, if you're gonna make a homemade chain, you can totally attach a clasp to it with a jump ring, and I am not gonna judge you for that. No judgment at all. But, since this is a, you know, how to make chain from scratch tutorial, I might as well show you how to actually solder your clasp onto your chain as well. The thing that you need to be aware of when you're using something like, oh, hi, that's my, that's my shirt. Um, but when you're using something like, nobody wants to see that, that's my mask, there we go. Um, there we go. So when you're using something like a lobster claw, which is what I am using, it's got a, a mechanism inside. It has a spring mechanism inside. So you have to be careful with how much you heat this baby or you're going to melt the small and delicate wires that are inside of here that make it do the thing it does in order to close the clasp. So when you're dealing with a clasp like a lobster claw that has a mechanism inside of it, you want to make sure that you um, put as little heat as possible on the link that's touching the clasp. If you're a little bit less um, <laughs> we love you, Keiko. Um, if you are less practiced with the torch and, and you're not completely good at directing your heat away from the delicate things, use a different kind of cloth. Use a hook and eye. Use a toggle. Use something that doesn't have a mechanism inside that's created from very small, delicate wires. Um, on a side note, and also related to my mother's birthday present, I really want to figure out um, how to make a, a harmony ball, you know, those sterling silver jingly balls. Um, I want to know how you make those, and I think it's just soldering a, a, a sphere with a coil of wire inside of it that makes the jingle jingle so sound. Um, so that may be one of our tutorials next week, because my I have... Well, first of all, I've misplaced the ones for my mom's bracelet, but when I find them, I'm sure it won. So we might make jingle balls to next week. It's on the list. But I have to teach myself how to do it first. This I already know how to do, so let's go for it. All right, so I have... Okay, so once again, I have a very abbreviated chain so I wound up with six circles so this end one has to stay open because I'm going to use that to attach my clasp so we've got open closed open closed open this last one can be closed because it's going to be my receptacle for my clasp and so it can my clasp can clasp onto this so basically what I have to do here is I've got to solder these three closed and then I'm going to use these three to link them together. Now obviously I'm not making a full length chain so all you have to do is just multiply this process by however lengths you need to make to make an actually wearable length chain. Alright so I've got my soldering board. I've got things falling down. Also, I am so not focused on that soldering board, so let's try and fix that. Again, I'm just so happy that we have a working stream computer, so I realize that the, the recalibrating of everything is going to be a pain, but at least it turns on, y'all, because... That was not the case yesterday. Actually, I think I'm gonna bl I'm gonna blame Amy because the the computer blame me exactly. The computer were just fine on Saturday when she was on stream, and then she went away and the computer stopped working. So I really think it's Amy's fault that the computer stopped working because she left it and it was sad. And it missed her just like we do. Um, oh, chicken, chicken, what? Chicken Big Mac? 
I mean, I will admit that the reason that I got gluten-free buns is because I really wanted a chicken sandwich, but I just made, you know, a, a good, you know, jalapeno ranch sauce and toasted the, the buns and then had, you know, I, I used frozen chicken patties. I was, I was gonna fry up some chicken from scratch and I did not have the energy for that. But, I mean, Keiko said your, your name a while back, Shaquille. Now we're talking about chicken sandwiches. And also uh, the fact that I'm hungry. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this up. And so if I'm going to solder this, I want to make sure that the two sides of my wire are touching each other. What, tell you about my chicken sandwich? It was really good. Unfortunately, I only got to have four chicken sandwiches because even though the uh, frozen chicken patties I got were sold in a package of 10, the gluten-free buns were sold in a package of four for $6.99. So I had enough money to get one package of buns and one package of chickens. So now I just have chickens with no buns. I, I have bunless chickens. Um, and honestly, Lori, I mean, I feel like no one should be surprised that making your own food is better than McDonald's. Like, I, okay. Sandwiches, burgers, yeah, okay fries. This is the one place where, where I will like take fast food or fast casual or anything because I don't have a deep fryer. I don't want a deep fryer in my house. Like it's just another appliance to have on my limited kitchen counter space. And, and so it's, it's kind of like my, and I, and I've not done well with air. F Are you okay? I'm not done well with air fryers, and so, like, if I want a really good, crispy, salty, appropriately greasy french fry, I, ah, uh, it's difficult to make that at home. Like, that's one of the few things that it's, tr it's difficult for me to replicate at home. So, that's something that I will seek out like I said, at a fast, I mean, I'm sorry, but I do love me a good salty McDonald's french fry. I do. And, um, yeah, and, and an extra, a good extra crispy, salty, like, warm, <coughs> oily french fry. Sorry. Like, I, I realize that all the foodies out there are like, you know, disowning me right now, but it's one of my guilty pleasures. But any, you know, anything else, like chicken sandwich, burger, like you can absolutely make that stuff better at home and cheaper with higher quality ingredients. But right now, you know what we're going to do? We're going to solder these rings with a torch. And no, you cannot use your torch to cook your burger. Just saying. See, potato... Once again, I don't have a deep fryer, so I've never successfully made, I tried, you know, the baked potato chips on Pinterest, and like, yeah, no, just don't, don't believe the hype, because they are just sad, and, and sad, and flaccid. Those are the baked potato chips on Pinterest. <coughs> Sorry, now Heather's infecting me with her, with her death coughs. You know, I'm so in the fence about an air fry or about a deep fryer. I feel like it would just. Mm. <laughs> I'm I'm not surprised, Lori. Like fresh fried anything is like that is my like I don't have a huge sweet tooth, but give me almost anything fried and. Uh, yeah, I will, I will, I will die on the hill of anything fried is amazing. I'm drinking water, Shaquille. I blame Heather. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my flux and I'm going to...
Do, do, do. Sorry, this has turned into a little bit more of a freeform stream than a tutorial stream. Um, once again, probably because I'm not completely in the right frame of mind because I wasn't expecting to stream tonight. But since we do have functional streaming equipment, we will be streaming tomorrow for Freeform Friday. And I will be doing our wire wrapping tutorial that was supposed to be yesterday. I will be doing that tomorrow for Freeform Friday. And then Saturday, of course, will be a sale. And there's all kinds of cool stuff that I have pulled aside for the sale. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and flux our joints. Okay, so I'm just going to dab some flux on those. go ahead and move that away because um, if they're touching each other they will solder to each other which is not what we want yeah so this morning Elton and Mamie wanted nothing to do with breakfast they just wanted outside outside go murder things breakfast later so because apparently they run my house they got outside and then breakfast later. So what I'm saying is my cats have officially trained me. I, I, I think I should have some kind of certification. This is an officially trained cat mother. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, see you go Lori. That's that's it seriously it is it's outside murder time like we don't want to eat we just want to go out and hunt things and not even eat them or kill them and knock on freaking wood no one's brought any bloody corpses inside in a while it's Shaquille you asked that already did we not answer that question um I think we were waiting for information on the person to whom you were trying to address the line because I'm sorry if it's just a general line then then you're you're just as lazy to in a bar but if you can give us some right so I think how's your dog or I would like to meet your dog or like okay anybody who's a dog person ask them about their dog and that's usually a home run but also I am shitty at dating so um I, I'm not your best advice here but Keiko is seconding me ask about the dog I am going to solder things if the person likes to play with torches I can help you with that I can't really help you with with dogs um <laughs> My relationship status is classified, Shaquille. But I do have a torch. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and heat these. And I just want to make sure I get them to the temperature where solder will flow. And then I'm just going to pick up the pieces of solder on my solder pick. It means I'm not going to share it on the internet, is what that means. Or I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Or send Heather to kill you. One of the two. Or maybe Mamie. I actually think Mamie would be a better assassin than Heather. Just saying. Okay, so there we go. Alright, so I dropped my solder on that joint. Heated it across. And... I'm going to do the same on this one. So you just want to make sure that you're heating evenly with your torch because solder flows towards heat so um, if you're not careful about where you put your torch your solder is going to flow away from your joint rather than across it and then the other thing you have to be careful of is what just um, happened to me which is uh, my rings are stuck on my board so I'm just going to heat them so I can flip them off and then I need to let them cool before I can um, link them together. Okay, that's actually a pretty, I, that's a good line. I like that. That's very cute. I think 
once again, not great at dating, so, you know. Uh, let's see, if I wanted these to cool off faster, then um, I could put them in some water if I had you know, brought any over here with me, or I could put them on a steel bench block that would leach the heat out um, more quickly, but of course I have none of those things, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wiggle them on the camera until they get cool enough to touch. And then we're going to, we're gonna do the, okay, so once again, if I were making an actual bracelet length chain, the amount, the number of rings that I would have made would be equivalent to half of the length of a bracelet, necklace, whatever you're making, okay? So three links plus three links is not really going to make you anything other than an extender. So just, you know, remember we're doing an abbreviated version because I got on late and I talked a lot. Um, so once again, take the technique and multiply it out to be what you need. The Not Great at Dating podcast. I feel like I could be good at that one. Heather, what do you think? Oh gosh, it's my forte. Okay, so yes, Heather and I are both really great at being not great at dating. So yes, um, and I am sorry that we, we missed the podcast last night because once again, technical difficulties. So um, I do think I, I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards hashtag button list as a as our podcast name that's that's the one that seems best to me what do you think Heather oh, sorry, what? she doesn't listen to me I wasn't, I'm sorry. how dare you I'm leaning towards half two words hashtag button list is being the name for the podcast yeah. like because that's just like opens opens a world of well, okay, so, so Shaquille, I have the opposite problem. We are not out there, I hope. Um, <laughs> but I have the problem of, of having bad first dates and then turning them into two and three year relationships. So, you know, um, everyone has their own, has their own journey and hopefully I am progressing on mine to a more healthy um, and a happy place with um, my current partner, but you know, it, there's there are no wrong answers. It's all I think just a crapshoot, personally. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and finish this chain, shall we? Whoop, wrong button, top button. Okay, so now. Uh, you are. You're way more popular with the 26 year olds than me. I'm more popular with. I mean, fair, but I don't, I'm not popular with any 26 year olds. You're just kicking my ass. You're, you're awesome. I'm adorable. Also, your hair looks really good. <laughs> and it's totally bedhead. <sighs> so not fair. I'm sorry. I, I, I know you hate me. I do. Um, Okay, so I, I do have to, I will finish this chain, I promise, but, okay, so I want to talk for just a brief minute about sponge rollers and fine hair. So if you have fine hair like me, like pukey ass little no body um, fine hair, it doesn't like to hold a curl if it's not curly already. And most curly hair isn't fine. So, one of the best tactics that I've found in my 43 years of having baby fine hair is 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 sponge rollers or other types of rollers. I've also used rags and and those like long like coily things. But basically, you've got to find exactly the right balance of you know. Your hair has to be just dry enough when you put it in the rolly thing that by whatever time you have to be presentable, your hair has completely dried in the rolly things and 
you got to put just enough product on it that it holds a curl, but not so much that it gets crunchy like a potato chip. And then you have to heat it just enough to get everything to work, but not so much that your hair just decides to, you know, split and frizz at the end. And it's, it obviously it did not work for me this morning. Like I call them Schrodinger's curls because it's like, if you get, if you get the formula right, if you get it perfect, for my hair at least, you have these beautiful, bouncy, voluminous, curly waves that will last for two to three days. Like, it's, it's worth the effort because if you get it right, then you don't have to do shit for two days. But if you don't get it right, then you get this, like, well, my hair is was kind of curly at one point, but now it's completely wilted. And yeah, so again, Schrodinger's curls. Like, I have such a love-hate relationship with foam rollers. It's not even funny. So yeah, this morning, and the other, the other thing that I don't love about this whole relationship that foam rollers and I are in is that it really works better if you plan in advance. Because if you, if you do this all the night before and then you sleep in them, it, then, then the, the prognosis is good for good curls. But that means that you got to, you know, get your shit together the night before, which of course I did not do today. I tried to do it in the morning and I didn't wake up at 5 a.m. So anyway, this is, this is what we got. So that's my, that's my TED talk about foam rollers. And now let's make some change. So, now I'm going to take my links that I made that I have not yet soldered, which are these three, and I'm going to use them to link everything together. So I've got one link here, and I'm going to link this one on to my class. This is the one I need to be careful of because they don't want to destroy the mechanism of my class. And they clasp. And I'm going to link on one of my soldered links, and I'm going to close it. So once again, since I saw these, I don't need to file them, okay? That's the benefit of the annoying sawing process is you don't have to file everything. Okay, so I've got there we go, okay. So open link, closed link. Now we need new open link. And then we're going to link onto that one closed link. And then we're going to close it. And the, the good thing about the, the bigger links like these that I've made is I can actually close them with my fingers. If you're making smaller chain, you're definitely going to need to use the pliers to close these. And sometimes, like me, you're also going to need to use the pliers to close the big links. But anyway. Alright, so there we go. So now we have open, closed, open, closed, and then we have one more open, one more closed. I'm sure everyone out there can predict what's going to happen next. Yes, we're going to take the open one, and we're going to link this closed one to this closed one, and that's going to be the completion of this segment of our chain. Now, one of the other cool things about making a chain like this is you, you don't have to do it all at once. Like, if you've got an extra foot of 16 gauge wire and you're like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with this. Make six links of chain, solder them together, set them aside, and you can always add on to it later. You can hang things from it. You could add a, a stone, you know, element in the middle. Like this, this is one of those things that you, you can use this technique to repurpose leftovers. I mean, shoot, if you have an extra inch of 16 gauge wire, make a chain link, make a jump ring, make a soldered ring. Like, there, there's no reason those things need to go in your scrap bucket unless there's literally nothing else you can do with them. So, now it's time to solder all of these things that I have made. So, I want to make sure specifically on this one here that my um, lobster claw is as far away from that joint as possible. And then I want to make sure on my other ones that my joints are as close 
to not touching I really just don't even don't don't with the grammar right now don't at me with the grammar um, I, I don't want those joints to be close to touching anything because they will solder together no shiny gem tonight Corvus we're just making chain but you can hang a shiny gem from it um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flux my joints. So that's one joint. There's one joint there. There's one joint there. I get three pieces of solder. I am going to use the same density of solder that I used before. So that's going to be easy. Um, you, If we were being really proper, um, what we would have used is medium on the first set and easy on the second set. But I'm just using easy on everything because that's what was in uh, easy reach. Also, I just dropped it on the floor, so it's no longer in easy reach. It's no longer even in sight. Okay. Um. All right. I'm going to show you how to split a piece of solder. Um, this is actually a useful technique to know. Okay, so hold on. Let me just see. Okay, that is not on camera. So this piece of solder is a little bit bigger than I needed it to be. So I'm actually going to split this in half and I'm going to use it to solder two rings instead of one. So. It'd be really great if I could get it on camera though. So Keiko, the so the density is um a combination of the strength of the bond and the melting point of the solder. So the lower the density of the solder and density meaning the concentration of silver in the solder, the lower the density, this the lower the melting point. So when you're doing uh, pieces with multiple joints, the lower the density, the less likely it is that you're going to destroy joints that you've previously soldered whilst you are trying to create new ones. Okay, so there are my two pieces of solder. So this is my bigger one. So that's the one I'm going to split and then that's my smaller one. So let's go ahead and get some fire on. Maybe. Thank you. Spark on this torch is a little. Okay, so I'm going to try and eat the frog first. So I'm going to try and split this piece of solder. So when you're splitting a piece of solder, what you want to do is you want to heat it and just get your solder pick right down the middle and bam, look at that. Two balls. No! Hey, you're supposed to be two balls. That's what I get for, you know, hubris. There we go. All right. Two balls instead of one. It only, you know, took me two shots at that. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up one of those balls and use it to solder this joint right here. And bam. Next one goes on this one. And next one, and the last one goes on this one, and there we go. That's our completed chain. Ta-da! Hold on. There we go. Okay, we did it. We made a very, very short chain. We made a chain for a very, very small fairy who likes really chunky stuff. Um, but once again, this exact same technique applies. You just have to multiply it out by um, how much chain um, you want. And for anybody who is wondering, it is approximately um, an inch and a half of wire per chain link, just if you're trying to plan your purchasing. Here, um, this is 16 gauge wire and it's about an inch and a half of wire per chain link. And I made six links of chain and I'm not going to set this on my ruler because it's going to set things on fire. 
but it made about two okay hold on I have non-flammable rulers here um okay but Corvus you know why wire gauges are the way they are because I've explained that before two and a half inches of chain so my um so my six links of chain um, on the largest part of my bail making pliers made about two and a half inches. So were I to, excuse me, extend this out to a full bracelet, I basically need to triple that. So I would need to do 18 links of chain. But once again, you can you can change the shape of your link you can change the size of your link like there's so many things you can do once you grasp the basic concept of this is how you make chain um i mean this this is kind of a soldering 101 video keiko uh but maybe i should do that for next week hmm Anyway, that's it for this evening. Um, we will be back on the, because once again, functional computer, functional computer. Um, we'll be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream uh, tomorrow with Freeform Friday, which will be the tutorial that was supposed to happen on Wednesday. So it's going to be that elevated station chain wire wrapping tutorial where um, I will talk about how to use um embellishments like bead caps and multiple beads on a link to make your basic wire wrap chain look so much more exciting so it's gonna be tomorrow evening um at 6 p.m on this channel twitch.tv forward slash beating dream and then of course saturday we are going to be having a sale at 6 30 p.m um, of strands and other cool things so thank you all so much uh, it is. Elevated Station Chain is, is technically the title of the class, Keiko. Uh, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Like, you can, you don't need to parse the words in the, in the order that I do. You can parse them in whatever order you want to. So, thank you all so much for tuning in, um, and thank you for being here, even though I said that I wasn't going to be here. Um, good night, Silver. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I will see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream, tomorrow at 6 p.m. for Freeform Friday. Everyone have a great night. We'll see you later. Bye!